Now that we know a bit about the properties of still images in a video project, let's go ahead and use them to edit a basic sequence. I have my images pre-edit sequence here, and it's just music. And what I'd like to do is add some animated images to this. Specifically, I want to tell the story of how to make bread. So starting with mixing the ingredients and into the kneading and then the baking and then the eating. So uh, I actually have all of this planned out in my images bin here. I'm just going to open it in its own tab. I'll double click and I'm going to switch over to uh, icon view so you can see here. OK, so lots of different images uh, that tell the bread making story. And if I go back to list view, you can see that I've actually numbered them. So from 1 to 12 uh, is the order that I want to edit them in. So I'm just going to uh, click on 1 and then shift click on 12 and then just drag them on over to my sequence. Again, by default, uh, each of these still images came in at 5 seconds long, but we're going to change that. And my video resolution for my sequence is 1920 by 1080, and most of these images are much larger than that, okay? So what I want to do is actually just a set to frame size all of these images so that I can see what I'm working with. So I'm going to just select them all and then right click and set to frame size. All right, so now we can kind of go through here and see a little bit better the entire composition of each of these shots. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to edit this. Now, if I needed to change the duration of all of my clips and masks, I could. I just uh, select them all and then press Command R or Control R on a PC. And then here under duration, I would just uh, put a new amount. So if I wanted them all to be four seconds long, I could type in four zero zero. And then uh, I'm going to take a look at this option here, ripple edit shifting trailing clips. I'll just uh, deselect it first so I can show you what happens if you don't select this option. So I'll say OK. And here you can see that every uh, clip was made four seconds long, but we have all of these gaps. So you can probably tell what selecting that option is going to do. I'll undo that. And then again, Command R. And so I'll do 400 and check this box. And now everything's going to ripple down. OK, so that's great, except what I'd like to do is actually edit it to the music. I'm just going to play over the first few seconds so you can hear the music and get a sense of the rhythm. All right, so what we want to do is edit this to the beat of the music. And it's nice to be able to do this on the fly so we can actually listen to the music as we make our edits. And so to do this, we're going to implement top and tail editing. We explored this briefly earlier in the course when we did it for video, but you can also do it with images. So to get set up for this, I'm going to lock my audio track because we do not want to edit any audio. And so we have our video track selected. And I just want to remind us what top and tail editing is. A top edit will lop off everything from the head of the shot to the playhead. The keyboard shortcut for that is Q. A tail edit will lop off everything from the playhead to the end of the shot. That keyboard shortcut is W. All right, so specifically what I'm going to do is just play the sequence, and then every time I want to cut to the next shot, I'll just press W. OK, so let's play. All right, very good. I'm just going to play over the first few seconds so we can see how this looks now that it's cut to the beat. OK, so now that I have the sequence cut the way I want, let's add our animations. Uh, I'm going to just come to the very first image uh, in my timeline and select it, and then come up to Effect Controls. If motion uh, is twirled up, go ahead and twirl that down. And we're primarily going to be uh, animating position and scale. So the first thing that I want to do is to uh, scale and position the image how I want to start, OK? And so basically, I don't want this pillar boxing here. So I'm going to scale up until that's gone, all right? And then maybe reposition a little bit as well. OK, so say this is where I want to start. 
Now I'm going to come over and click on my two stopwatches next to position and scale. And once I've done that, this tells Premiere that I'm going to start animating. So I'm going to go to another point within this shot, and it's going to be at the very end. Okay, so you can try to eye it up, but what I always do is I just press my down arrow key, which goes to the very first frame of the next shot, and then I press my left arrow key, all right, and that'll get me to the very end of this shot. And now what I could do is place two more keyframes here and then change my scaling and my position parameters like so. And I'm just going to play over this and let's see how the animation looks. Okay, so I think that was fine. Let's select this next image and I'll do my up arrow key to go to the very first frame. And let's see, we zoomed in here, so let's uh, zoom out here. So let's scale in and reposition it so that we are focused on our hand here. And then, so if this is how I want the image to start, now I can set uh, my keyframes. So I'm going to click on my stopwatches and I'm gonna press my down arrow key and then one to the left. So we're at the very last frame here. And before, you know, I actually manually added the keyframes, but I also wanna show you that once you've clicked on your stopwatches, you don't even need to do that. All you need to do is change uh, your parameters and keyframes will be added automatically. So we're, Zooming out, right? So I'm going to scale out. And you can use these value shuttles here in the effect controls panel, or you can just double click right here in the uh, program monitor and reposition and rescale that way as well. So let me play this one. All right, so I'll go through uh, image by image and determine how I want the image to start and how I want it to stop and animate down the line. I do have a sequence uh, right here where I've already done this. So let me just play this for you so you can see how things turned out. Okay, so with fairly little effort, we've added motion to our static images, which provides a bit more visual interest to the sequence.